echo or something. I got a good delay. I don't know what else to really put on the board. Hey folks, welcome to another edition of the Mediocre Cover Band Guitar Guy. Uh, it's a pretty muggy old day here today, so uh, excuse the sweat and I'm probably going to start lactating once. Because uh, it's hot. It's hotter than, uh, hotter than balls, as they say. Anyway, uh, the night's topic that I'm going to share with some of y'all is what to expect when you leave an original band and start doing the cover scene. Um, there is a bit of culture shock there, boys and girls, and uh, some people on both spectrums, like if you leave a cover band to go to the original band way or solo artist or whatever, um, there are some things that are different. And I've been on both ends of the spectrum a few times in my life. And uh, so here's how it goes. I played in an original band, a couple of original bands, uh, and I had fun. I did enjoy it. I recorded a record with one of them, and uh, it, was, it was an awesome experience to get in and do all those things. Uh, playing live was different as well. For instance, there are nights you don't go on stage until 1 o'clock in the morning. And you don't want to be a dick about it and just show up like 5 to 1, go on stage, play your thing and go. You're trying to support because here's the other thing with original music. You're sharing the stage with three to four other bands. And you try to support the people that you're doing the show with, even if you go on first, stick around for a while, and whatever. So you do that, you go on stage at one, you play it'll say quarter after two in the morning sometimes. Uh, and you walk away with about eight bucks. If you're lucky. Because I've walked away owing money for beer. But let's just say you had a great night in full house. You got eight bucks. You got enough to throw a couple more bucks in and get yourself like a Big Mac meal on your way home from your gig. Uh, that's your payoff for playing your songs. Um, now, I wasn't playing my songs. I was playing somebody else's songs in an original band. So sometimes I walked away thinking, wow, I, uh, I got to get up with like children tomorrow morning. It's 2 o'clock and I have to go home and justify that um, I got a, an empty McDonald's bag for my troubles. So I did that for a few years, and I thought it was still fun. Then I got old, and old isn't kind. It really isn't. And then you don't want to go down and watch bands scream at you and things because you're old, right? So you end up being a dick and going to the show 5 to 1, walking on stage, playing an hour and 15, and leaving. And going home and going to bed and then having a three-year-old jump on you the next morning because, you know, the thing about kids is they want to eat. And you have to feed them because when they're three years old, they can't do it themselves. Um, so you're responsible. Then I started uh, playing in a cover band. I, I had a little bit of a break. Uh, I had a busy job at the time running my own little trucking company. And... Uh, children and didn't really have time to commit to music in general for a while until things sort of evened off a little bit. 
and met up with a high school friend who uh, was still playing and actually started playing drums, who mentioned another high school friend was uh, interested in getting together just to play some tunes, which sparked another high school friend uh, to come and uh, want to join us playing some more tunes. And uh, then we got a singer and we all of a sudden had a cover band. And there was no real thing there to go out and play like all these gigs and be out in the bars all night. But this amazing thing happened where we got a gig. We were excited. And then we went and we played the gig and something magical that I hadn't experienced since the 90s happened. Somebody put money in my hand. And I was like, what the fuck is this? You get money for playing? Other people's shit? I forgot about that because I'd done it before I joined an original band. And then I became a slave to it and I enjoy playing in a cover band. And I play in a pretty cool cover band. I'm gonna give us a plug, we're called the Urban Legends. And um, we have a lot of fun, but we take some of the songs and we put our own personalities into them and uh, have fun with it because that's what you got to do because you're playing the same, you know, you're going to play Hurt So Good all the time. You're going to play stuff like that. You got to kind of inject a little bit of you in there, you know, throw a little bass line in there, throw a little pinch harmonic in there, whatever, just to throw your personality on top of it and uh, have fun. Make everybody else in the band kind of chuckle a little bit. Going from the other end of the spectrum and leaving a cover band as I did before and play in my first original band and play to a full club with some really other uh, great bands. Did an all ages show and did um, a show later on that night that we headlined and walked away with nothing. That was a little bit of a shock to me because I looked out and we had a lot of people in the crowd and I don't know if it was the club, I don't know if it was somebody in the band or one of the bands, because that's the other thing with original bands, you've got to share the door with three or four other bands, right? Everybody gets a cut. Um, and that was like, kind of like, well, where did the money go? There's no money, but I stuck at it. And um, now I'm playing covers. Uh, I still write riffs and shit like that and have a bit of fun, but if I'm gonna go out and play and play for four hours, I get to play for very long periods of time. I get to play more because when I was playing in original bands, you played probably a gig every three, four months and for an hour and 15 minutes. Collectively, you probably play in the run of a year while I play in a night now. And uh, it's, it's fun. So if you're leaving the original scene and going into covers, you're gonna to have to do a lot more work too. Cause you gotta learn the songs and you gotta learn how to play them right. It's not like just smashing on an open D and writing your own riff that sounds like the other 11 riffs that you just played where your singer's screaming. Uh, you, you've gotta put work into it. You, you know, if you're a singer, you gotta be able to sing. If you're a drummer, you just can't do blast beats all night. John Cougar does not have blast beats. Um, if you're a bassist, you've gotta learn how to lock in with the drummer. You can't be all over the place. Um, and that's the hardest part probably for the rhythm section in a, in a cover band is that they're always the overlooked ones when it comes to a show. The guitar player gets a little bit, singer gets like 98% of the attention, the guitar player, the guitar player will get about 2% from other guitar players, um, and then the poor old bass player and drummer just walk out like, hmm, at least I got paid. But, uh, you know, you don't dance without your bass player and drummer either. So if you're a bass player and a drummer, you really got to learn that whole thing as well. It's not just about going out and putting every ounce of energy you got in 11 songs. You have to put it into, sometimes you could play 60 songs, and that's another thing you got to get used to, is winding yourself. You got to be able to stay up there for a long time. Uh, you're not there to hang out with your buddies. Like when you played at Distortion, your friends came and saw a gig. You, you were like, hey, I had a conversation, found out like how their nan was doing and how their dog was and, you know, and then you played a song that sounded just like the last song you played and people, you know, jumped around and whatever. Um, pace yourself because you got three hours, you've got three one-hour sets in one night to play two nights in a row a lot of the time. 
And that's probably the hardest adjustment. If you're leaving a cover band situation to go into the original sort of situation, you're probably going to have trouble with downtime. Because if you're not playing until 1 o'clock in the morning, what are you doing until 1 o'clock in the morning? That's the first thing you're going to ask yourself. And then when you get up at 1 o'clock in the morning, you're probably not going to be in the mood to start playing at 1 o'clock in the morning. Um, or sometimes 2 o'clock in the morning, you might start your set. Been on the end of that one too, folks, and it's not fun. Uh, so there's a lot of climate change there and things that you have to keep in, in mind. But just remember, when you're doing the cover band thing, you're probably going to make some more money than what you would doing your originals. Doing your originals, you're probably going to walk away feeling a little bit better about what you just did sometimes. But one thing you got to keep uh, in mind is you got to give them a show no matter what you're doing. And you're still a musician, and uh, there's nothing wrong with doing original music. I'm not knocking it. If you want to do it and that's what you're doing, that's great. Uh, I go and see my friends play uh, when they do their shows, and I enjoy it. It's just that being almost 50 years old, uh, I don't think that it's a place for me anymore, as stereotypical as it sounds when someone says, well, you got to grow up, you're 50 years old, you can't be playing that heavy metal racket downtown now. Um, no, I can't. My body just can't handle it. Um, I don't know how the hell, like, we haven't played since January. I don't know how the hell I'm going to cope with getting on the stage and playing for three hours now. I'm pretty used to being in bed, like, by 10.30 on a Saturday night. So, folks... Thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Why don't you give it a click and a like if you liked it. Um, share it. Do whatever. Marry it. I don't care. Just stay safe.